was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Whom the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I Yes, sir.
Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship, to our combined worship service this morning. Uh, Glad to have you all with us here uh, in the sanctuary, and also a welcome to those of you joining us on the stream uh, here today. Um, Folks in the back, there's plenty of of room, especially on this side, if you want to come on up over here. Um, We have plenty of room up over here for you to sit. Uh, So welcome to all of you. Uh, It's a very important day. A welcome to the Madison Avenue group, who is uh, providing uh, video shooting all day today. We're we're glad to have you uh, with us, uh, and uh, um, thank you for coming in so early this morning. Uh, When I got here at 7.30, they were already here and already working, so um, they're definitely earning their keep uh, this morning. Um, We continue uh, the celebration of the Easter season. Today is the third Sunday uh, of the Easter season. We'll have more to say about uh, the resurrection of Jesus uh, and uh, and Easter uh, coming up in my message today. Uh, Just a reminder, uh, we will be communing today. Uh, We'll be communing by intinction, and we're going to do it up here in the front uh, of uh, of the chancel area. We will um, be doing it continuously. So, uh, ushers, let's do this side over here first, and then we'll move to this side, okay? Um, If you are a guest or a visitor among us, uh, and you feel so moved by the Holy Spirit, uh, feel free to come and join us uh, at the Lord's table this morning. Um, Just a reminder, I do have gluten-free wafers. If anyone needs a gluten-free wafer, just say gluten-free when you you come forward. Uh, And remember, we have two kinds of of, uh, liquid there you can dip your wafer into. We have the purple stuff, which is wine, and then we have the the clear kind of golden liquid. That's uh, the grape juice. So you can choose either one. The the worship assistant will have uh, both in his hands. Okay. I hope uh, all of you are staying for the potluck afterwards. We have lots of food coming. Um, That should be an enjoyable time as well. Uh, And then the testimonials begin at 1 p.m. Hopefully, if you're doing a testimonial, you received a time uh, slot for your uh, recording session. Uh, If you didn't uh, receive one, the guy way in the back there, Rich Menzel, raise your hand, Rich. He's the guy to see. Okay? All right, um, that's all I have myself. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask Taya Sutherland uh, to come forward, and she's going to share some information about the upcoming rummage sale. Hi, good morning. Good morning. The annual rummage sale will be held in two weeks on Saturday, May 6th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the gym. We are looking for volunteers to help set up tables and unload the storage unit next week after second service. From May 1st through the 5th, we will need volunteers to sort items and fold clothes for the sale. The gym will be open each day during office hours and until 8 p.m. So please come when it is convenient for you. We can really use the help. The storage unit is outside and ready for your donations, but just remember that the last day to drop off donations is Thursday, May 4th. That gives us time on Friday to make sure everything is ready on on Saturday. Lastly, we will need volunteers on the day of the event, and we will provide a lunch for you. So if you have some time on that day, we would love to have you. The event is always very well attended, and so your help is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, please see me or Beth Polly after the service. Thank you so much. Thank you, Taya. Let's begin our worship. Would you please stand if you are able? We will begin with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Apostle John wrote to the church in his first letter, the first chapter, the following words, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a few moments to reflect upon our own personal sinfulness and our need to uh, confess before Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear these words of forgiveness. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, our uh, processional hymn uh, is um, one that we usually do. We call it the hymn of praise, Um, and it is, This is the Feast.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you lifted up this fallen world, rescuing us from the hopelessness of death. Grant your faithful people a share in the joys that are eternal. This we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'll ask the choir to come forward and share in uh, an offering of, of, of praise for us this morning.
backstory here. Um, our regular pianist uh, for our choir uh, also plays at another church at 1030. Um, so obviously she couldn't be here today. So she came in and recorded that for us. And then we are playing it to her or singing it to her recording. So just so you know, um, that's why all the messing around up here with a monitor and everything. Okay, we'll continue our worship with the reading of the lessons. Good morning. This morning, for our first lesson, I will share with you several verses from the Apostle Paul's letters concerning what it means to be the church. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope. Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then stand firm in one Spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. When you come together, each of you bring a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Here ends our first lesson. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I'm beginning uh, in uh, the 24th chapter at verse 13. Now the same day, two of them, two disciples, were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. When their, Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Today we continue in our Growing in Christ series, uh, and uh, we are actually uh, 
talking for the second week about the importance of the church for your spiritual life. Uh, and so uh, we continue uh, memorizing this particular verse from the Psalms, Psalm 122, 1. Why don't you rehearse it with me? I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let's do it one more time together. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Okay, uh, let's together now speak that memory verse from memory. Okay, are we ready? I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. All right, good job. Came back just as strong uh, the last time when you weren't using the notes as when you were. So very good. Uh, continue to memorize that verse. Continue to use it in your devotions this week and, and make it a part uh, of, of your heart. Today, the title of my message is, Is the Church Really Necessary? At first glance, the question asked in my message title here today might seem incredibly obvious. After all, I'm kind of preaching to the choir. Well, actually, I'm literally preaching to the choir. <laughs> and the rest of you who are the, the spiritual choir this morning for our worship service. I mean, you're here this morning because you do believe that the church is absolutely necessary. But you know, over the years, I've run into people who tell me, Pastor, I believe in Jesus, but I'm just not a big fan of the church. Then, of course, they try to justify their negative views of the church with all kinds of criticisms. You know, the people in the church, they're, they're all just hypocrites. The church just wants my money. I went to church one time, but a person or, or certain people or a certain pastor treated me poorly or said something disrespectful about me. And they end the conversation with the statement, I don't need to go to church to follow Jesus. Now, I'm sure that what I'm speaking to you here this morning is, is not really new to you. I'm sure you run into people like this all the time as well in your daily interactions with people, maybe even a family member or, or a good friend. And today, I want us to think about how we might respond in a positive way to people like this. People who say they love Jesus, but have no desire to be a part of the body of Christ. The question we are really asking this morning is this. Is the church really necessary for my salvation and faith. At this time of year, many of us are turning our minds towards planting a garden. I'm, I'm certainly do that. My wife and I have talked about that. We've actually gone out and bought some seed, and, and it's our intention to get some early plants in the ground, at least some early seed in the ground this coming week if the weather cooperates. And I think the garden is an excellent metaphor for our spiritual lives. We know what happens to a garden that is unattended over time. Weeds grow up and choke the plants you've planted. Disease and insects attack the health of your plants. All of these conditions lead to what? They, they lead to unhealthy plants, sickly fruit, and a reduction in the, the quantity and the quality of the fruit that you produce. In a similar way, our spiritual lives suffer when neglected, when our spiritual gardens go untended, without constant prayer, and Bible reading, worship, and fellowship among fellow believers in the faith. Our faith gets stunted, and it wilts on the vine, doesn't it, under the pressures of the world and the, the culture around us. We may think we love Jesus. 
We may think we have strong faith. We may think we know and do God's will. But what ends up happening more times than not is that our beliefs begin to resemble those of the world when we're not hanging out with fellow Christians in the body of Christ. Think about that. I saw a meme on Facebook recently. A man says, it was kind of like divided into two, two panels, and a man says, I don't have to go to church to believe in God. That was in the first panel. He's kind of speaking to you. In the second panel, the man is looking in a mirror at himself. And on one side of the mirror, it says, me. And on the other side of the mirror, it says, myself. And at the top of the mirror, it says, I. And at the bottom of the mirror, it says, God. And what I took that to mean is that this man is looking in the mirror, and his image of God is me, myself, and I. And that's the danger, isn't it, of separating ourselves from the church, from the body of Christ. Our image of God begins to look an awful lot like ourselves. The purpose, one of the purposes of the church is to maintain that proper image of who God is in relationship to who we are. We are not God. And that's the church's job to continue to remind us of that. That we, you and me, are not God. There's only one God. There's only one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On this, the third Sunday of the Easter season, the church typically reads the, the gospel story that we read here this morning about the two men walking on the way uh, to the town of Emmaus later that day after Jesus' was, uh, tomb was found empty. And on the road, Jesus meets up with them. Uh, now, his, th their eyes are kept from recognizing him, our scripture says. But Jesus meets up with them and begins to explain to them the true gospel. When they realize who is speaking to them in the breaking of the bread, Jesus disappears. And the two men look at each other and they say, We're not, in fact, let me go to that. We're not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? You see, one of the primary purposes of the church is to preserve and to proclaim the one true gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, you need the church to make sure that you uh, keep the gospel straight in your minds. There's, there's something about the, the human mind that... Uh, you know, left to its own devices, um, it has a tendency um, to start molding and shaping things and, uh, you know, like reinterpreting history um, to, to fit our particular needs of the moment. And uh, if I find myself uh, not in, uh, in sync with the true gospel of Jesus, my mind sometimes wants to change that gospel so that I feel more comfortable. So one of the jobs of the church is to continue to speak the truth of the gospel, even if it hurts, even if it makes you uncomfortable. And we try to do that here in this church. We try to do it in the church universal. Another thing that the, uh, the church tries to do uh, is... Uh, is to create unity within the church. Well, unity with God and, and unity uh, with one another. That's why we proclaim one true gospel. You know, if we lived in an ideal world, every single church and every single community throughout the world would proclaim the exact same true gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we know, you know, we're, we're human and, 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 you know, we make mistakes and we, you know, we, we fall 
uh, off into the weeds from time to time. And so sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes the church gets it wrong. But our prayer should always be that the church is proclaiming a gospel that unites the church universally throughout the world. Here's what Paul told the church at Ephesus. Uh, our reader Mike read this earlier today. He, uh, Paul says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. That's a, just a critical, critical thing that we have to be doing as the body of Christ. We have to be looking for unity of the Spirit. And the unity of the Spirit comes through the proclamation of the true gospel of Jesus. You know, we, we have a word for that, this, this unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. It's called community. Community, the contraction of two words, common unity. What's our common unity? Jesus Christ and Him crucified and raised from the dead. Now, I'm going to back up there. In Ephesians 4.1, Paul says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Living that life, living that life to which you have been called is not easy. It's a counter-cultural life. It's not easy to swim upstream against the prevailing thinking and beliefs promulgated by our society and our culture. The church is the place where you receive the encouragement necessary to resist the idolatrous teachings promulgated by the false prophets who have the megaphones in today's world. Now think about that word encouragement. Okay, The word encouragement means to have courage infused, to put courage in you. And so you come to church to receive the courage to live the life to which you have been called, which is to follow Jesus, to be His disciple. Here's another word from Paul that Mike read earlier this morning. Make every effort to keep the unity... Oh, not... Got to go. Got to move on here. There we go. Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Think about that. Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. In other words, know the will of God and do the will of God in your life. Stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. And I'm going to read on here. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You see, if we are to live as Christ has called us to live, we need each other. We need the encouragement of, of each other. We need to be encouraging one another to hang in there and to live the life that God has called us to live, to live as, as Jesus taught, regardless of how the rest of the world treats us. You know, and right now, you know, the church has kind of fallen out of season, hasn't it, with the rest of the world? And we're taking a lot of hits. There's a lot of ridicule directed at the church. And you know what I say? So what? So what? That's their problem. That's not our problem. We know what we're supposed to be doing, right? We know that we are to be living as God has called us to live. And that's what we ought to be concentrating on doing. That's why it's important to be in your Bibles and, and, and just studying the teachings of Jesus and Paul and the other apostles and the other prophets so that we know exactly what our marching orders are. And just get out there and do it. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus, focused on God, and don't worry about the rest of the world. Okay? God's at work in the rest of the world. The Holy Spirit's at work in the rest of the world. 
God will lead you to who you need to speak to. God will lead you where you need to go to be faithful to him and to fulfill your calling. And so, you know, the church is the place where you learn what it means to be a follower of Jesus. You know, as one of our liturgy prayers says, uh, you know, one of those post-communion prayers, in fact, I might even use it today at the end of our communion, we talk about living, uh, uh, turning to Jesus as a model of the godly life, as a model of the godly life. That, that model there um, is not just Jesus, but it's also the great saints in the church today who are living the faith, living it faithfully, and who end up being for us examples of what it means to live a life worthy of the calling that we've received in Jesus. And you know who those people are. When you don't come to church, you don't get to rub elbows with those great saints who are living the life. You don't get to receive from them the encouragement and, and, and the, uh, you don't get to receive from them um, you know, that, that push to be like them and, and to, to model your life after them. So Paul tells us, he says, join together in following my example. Paul's saying, you know, look to me. If you want to know what it looks like to live uh, the gospel worthy of your calling, then, then look to me, brothers and sisters. And then he says, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. If you want to be successful in your faith life, if you want to be, if you want to be fruitful in your faith life, find, find some mentors in the church. Find some people who are doing it really good. Get with them, rub elbows with them, befriend them, hang out with them, be a pest, all right? Ask them questions. Ask them to help you be a better disciple of Jesus. And you know what? I bet they will be just uh, very happy to do that for you, all right? So let me go back to that first question you know, that I asked in my, in my uh, opening sentences. Is, is the church really necessary? Is the church really necessary for my salvation and faith? Well, let me ask it just a little differently. Can you be saved without participation in the church? I'm going to say maybe. I can't really say for sure. That's really up to God, isn't it? It's up to God to decide about the people who aren't in the church. But I, knew, I know this. If, if all the Christians, all the people who say they are Christians in the world, did not neglect meeting together as the body of Christ, we'd blow the walls out here. We wouldn't just need two services that are kind of full. We'd need three or four, or maybe five services, and we'd be packed. So how do we encourage those people to come? We encourage them to come by asking this question. If they say, if they say yes, I can be saved without participating in the church, you can say, well and good. You know, that's between you and your God. But can you fulfill the calling that you have received from God without being a part of the body of Christ, the church of God? And I'm here to say, no, you can't. That's what the Bible teaches. You cannot fulfill your calling if you are separated from the body of Christ. It's only here when we are together that we are able to find the strength and the wisdom and the courage and the knowledge necessary to be a successful uh, proclamation of the gospel to the world. Your call is to join with other Christians to be Christ in the world. It's very hard to be Christ in the world by yourself. It's much more effective to be Christ in the world as the body of Christ 
called together by the Holy Spirit. You can't do it alone. Remember I talked about that guy that was looking in the mirror? I want to ask you this morning, when you look in the mirror, who do you see? Do you see yourself, a human person, a me-centered person, inward-looking, concerned only about your uh, own uh, concerns? Or when you look in the mirror, do you see a person who looks like Jesus? A person who's always looking outward, looking to God, and looking to his or her neighbor. The purpose of the church, the church's reason for being, is to transform you from the former, from that me-centered person, into the latter, a Jesus-centered person. So, is the church really necessary? Absolutely. Amen. As we prepare to approach God this morning with our prayers, let me uh, ask, are there any joys or victories you'd like to share with the congregation this morning? Birthdays, anniversaries, got a God over here? Okay, your, your granddaughter, what's her name? Anastasia is dancing at the Valentine in the, the musical Cinderella. That's awesome. Congratulations, Jean. Yes. Well, Arrow Dickerson, happy anniversary, 40 years. That's awesome. Congratulations. Others. Yes. Okay. Happy happy anniversary to the to the cramps. So uh, how many years? Thirteen years. Congratulations. There was a little hesitancy there. <laughs> Other joys this morning. Anyone else? Yes. All right. Congratulations. All right. Well, we will keep keep Izzy in our prayers. She's up for a, a full-ride scholarship to, uh, to University of Toledo, so that's awesome. All right. Did I see another one over here? Yes, Jean. Okay. So, Jean, you have lots of joys in your life. So, Jean's uh, granddaughter's in Denver. All three of them uh, are in, it's the musical called The High School Musical. All right. Awesome. Any other joys? Yes, John. Okay. We'll tell him we said happy birthday. Happy birthday to Bob. Anyone else? All right. I have a couple additions to our prayer list here this morning. Uh, We want to add Keith. Uh, he is a uh, cousin of Bob Emptage. He has a chronic illness, so we'll pray for Keith. Also, we want to add Jim. Uh, he's got some significant, serious work issues that he's dealing with. Could use some encouragement, so we'll pray for him this morning. Anyone else that we should be praying for today? Yes? Pray for Cindy Young. Okay, anyone else? Yes? Okay, pray for Shelby, has a broken foot. Okay, all right, yes. Yeah, Marilyn Lohman is uh, recovering from uh, knee surgery, knee replacement surgery, as is D. Belo. So So we'll pray for Marilyn and D for recovery from surgery. All right, others? Yes. Mila, so we'll pray for Mila, just diagnosed with diabetes. She's how old? 
four years old. Wow, that's young. Okay, thank you. And there was another, yes? Okay, we'll pray for the family and friends of Miles. Uh, a young man died of, in a car accident. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Taya. All right, so Walter and Chris are going to Italy. Safe travel. We will pray for you. Okay, anyone else? Do I see one? Yep, yep. All right, so we'll pray for Janet and Ron who have COVID and another Ron who has has, has recovering from shoulder surgery. All right, anyone else? Lots of prayer requests today. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Father in heaven, gracious Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together as your people, to gather in this place. We call this building a church building because it houses the church, the body of Christ, this, this fellowship, this, this family of faith that you've called together by your Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to never take this family for granted. Uh, help us to never lose contact with this family. Uh, help us to, to hang together. As St. As Paul said, help us to, to never uh, neglect meeting together um, as the family of God. Uh, for it is here, Lord, that you speak to us. It is here that you surround us with your love and your, your presence. It is here that you infuse us with, with power and encouragement. It's here, Lord, that we, we learn your teachings. We, we learn what it means to be a disciple of, of you, Heavenly Father, and your Son, Jesus. And so we pray, come, come to us, um, uh, and, and open our eyes and ears to you and to each other uh, that we might just soak this in, soak this, this experience in of being the body uh, so that when we go forth from this place, uh, we will be able to withstand all of uh, the uh, slings and arrows of the evil one, um, that we will be able to withstand all of the ridicule that we'll be able to withstand um, you know all of the condescension uh, that comes our way from from the rest of the world uh, Lord help us to focus help us to focus on following you and worshiping you and praising you uh, seeking your aid uh, each and every day uh, help us to just live in your presence um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, Lord, we pray that you surround us with your, your power, that you would protect us from every evil. Uh, Lord, we, we pray that uh, when times get tough, uh, we pray, Lord, that when uh, temptation comes, uh, when tragedy comes, uh, when struggles come our way, Lord, we pray um, that our faith will be found to be strong and not weak. That, that we will have our eyes opened and, and recognize your presence there with us, walking beside us, walking behind us and in front of us, uh, Lord, as you uh, protect us um, and protect our faith um, so that we may run the race and, and run the race well um, and help you build and nourish your kingdom in the world. Um, until that day, you call us home. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his example, his life, his life-giving death on the cross. And we thank you, Lord, that you raised him from the dead, never to die again, the first fruits of the resurrection. And because we see that, we know that truth. We know there is a resurrection. We've heard your promises that all who trust in Jesus will not perish but have eternal life. And so we, we trust in that hope, that hope of resurrection and eternal life through Jesus. 
your son. Lord, hear the prayers we bring and, and offer now. Uh, each of us uh, comes with our own prayer lists, and we're lifting them up right now in the silence of our hearts, praying for those, uh, perhaps ourselves, and, and certainly others in our lives who, who have special needs. So we pray, Father, um, that you hear those prayers. Hear the prayers for those on our prayer list that we publish. Hear the, our prayers for those we mentioned here at the beginning of our service. Um, for Jim, we pray for Keith, we pray for Cindy and Shelby, Marilyn and Dee and Neela. We pray for Janet and Ron and for Ron, for Chris and Walter, that they have safe travel. We pray for consolation to be upon the family and friends of Miles who passed away in a car accident. Lord, you know the needs of all these people for whom we pray. We pray that you anoint them with your healing power. Bring them the healing and the wholeness that they require as is best for them in accordance with your will. Lord, we come together as one body today. Uh, we, we have one worship service today, and then we're going to gather for a fellowship meal. We pray that you just be in work in this, in this worship service. Be at work in our fellowship later on. Lord, just by the power of your Holy Spirit, draw us closer together to you. Um, draw us closer together to one another, that we may hang together and be the church in the world. And may um, we be an example uh, to the rest of the world of what you are asking of us. May we be an example to the rest of the world of how much you love us and want to be a part of our lives. We entrust ourselves to you. We entrust our world to you, Lord God. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. At this time, uh, ushers, I'm going to ask you to come forward uh, and receive the offering. All the poor and powerless And all the lost and lonely And all the thieves will confess And know that you are holy And know that you are holy all will sing out hallelujah we will cry out hallelujah and all the hearts who are content And all who feel unworthy And all who hurt with nothing left Know that you are holy And all will sing out hallelujah We will cry out hallelujah Mountains. 
sins Go out and sell it to the masses That he is God Shout it Go out and scream it from the mountain Go out and sell it to the masses That he is God Shout it Go out and scream it from the mountain Go out and sell it to the That he is God. Shout it. Go out and scream it from the mountain. Go out and tell it to the masses. That he is. that were sown that we may be fed with the bread of life gather the hopes and the dreams of all unite them with the prayers we offer now grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus, for he is the true Passover lamb, 
who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then our Lord took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new testament, the new promise in my blood, blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. And helpers, would you come forward, please? Right. Let's uh, let's commune the worship team first. Go on this side.
wonderful things and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace turn your eyes to the hillside where
your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head well I will sing of the goodness
have been so, so good with every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. that I wake up till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good Would you please stand? Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our life to his. Through this same Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace now and always. Amen. All right. Our sending hymn today is not in the hymnal. Uh, it will be on the screen. It's uh, called Christ Arose. Uh, up from the grave he arose. So I'm sure you'll be uh, familiar with it when we sing it. It's a good hymn.
Rich, do you have anything you want to tell anybody? We're ready. Well, we're ready. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're going to need some of you to hang out in the uh, gathering area. Look like you're at coffee hour, okay? Go get your coffee, get some food, sit around the tables. Some of you go over and sit in the fluffy chairs. We need to get some pictures. The rest of you can go on into the gym, okay? And in just a few minutes, we'll uh, strap on the feed bag and start to eat, all right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll pray. Yeah, before we start eating, I'll pray. I will do that. Okay, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.